the traditional way of making a violin, crafting a music box out of seasoned maple and pine. This workshop is in Cremona in northern Italy, where the most revered of violin makers, Antonio Stradivari, made his instruments. And here, in a technology centre at Exeter University in the west of England, is a new and rather less romantic way of making a violin in the orange glow of a nitrogen-filled oven. This is a $1 million 3D printer. An invisible laser beam shuttles back and forth, burning out a familiar silhouette. Could a new industrial revolution be on the way? Everything begins with a computer design, in this case the scan of an ordinary violin. It could have been a Stradivarius. The printer would still have copied it exactly, although not in wood. Crucial to this whole process is the raw material, a fine-grained powder made out of plastic. This is, if you like, a kind of magic dust, expensive at $500 a kilo, and so refined, it has its own acronym. What we're talking here is PEAK, uh, polyether ether keto, which is a very high performing plastic. It's used very heavily in the aerospace industry, very heavily in the Formula One industry. It's called laser sintering. The laser beam fuses the powder in a thin outline. That contour is slowly added to layer by layer, and the objects, two violins, gradually take shape. This, in the jargon, is known as additive layer manufacturing. What comes out on the printer tray is a powder cake. Blow away the loose, unfused powder, and the violins emerge identical twins. 3D printing has been used for prototypes for about 25 years, but now suddenly it's evolved into manufacturing. Why the change? Materials. Materials and the technology. Over that period of time, the accuracy, the nature of the shapes that can be produced, but more than anything, it's the materials. The materials are now capable of performing. Instead of being a look and see material, they physically work. They can 3D print with both plastic and metal powders. Most objects we were shown were of plastic, a multi-gear machine, a leg for a para-Olympic cyclist, a bespoke part for a Formula One racing car. We've been asked as a request from the aerospace companies that they have a long-term dream that they want machines that are 40 metres long to produce the full wing of an aircraft. Now, it's probably too far, but you can see that there are steps in that direction. A plastic human vertebra copied in intricate detail from a medical scan. This is a project in development. At the moment, orthopaedic surgeons have, say, the choice of five different implants that they can use. Well, how many people are there in the world? You could actually make a bespoke implant. The violin was made as a challenge. It took less than a day to print and cost about $10,000. We took it to traditional violin makers in Exeter, a husband and wife team. It was greeted as if an alien creature had crept into the workshop. And then the acid test, playing it. It's got quite a sweet tone, but no real projection um, or depth to the tone. It, it was sounding closed, muted, um, lacking depth. Um, kind of better than I expected. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's better than I expected. Quite a long way from being a professional instrument. Yeah. <laughs> it's their first go. Mm. <laughs> Do you feel threatened? No. Yeah. <laughs> the plastic violin is being modified to improve the sound, but its very existence at least hints at the potential of 3D printing, and it would seem the only limitation is our imaginations.